Hi everyone, welcome to unit three. So this is gonna be page 167, it's M1. So M1, uh, 167, uh, not to be confused with M2, 167. So M2 is module two, and we're still in module one, okay? Um, and this is, oh, again, volume one uh, in your algebra two book. All right, so we're at the zero is the hero, decomposing cubic functions. So, um, Again, for our do now, we just did uh, problems number one through four. Please remember to use uh, the zero product property, which is where we set each of these factors equal to zero. Do not multiply them out. I mean, you can. You'll get the. You'll still get the right answer if you do all the math right. But uh, the point of this one is to set everything equal to zero. That's we're practicing this for the things that we're going to getting ready for what we're going to be doing later today. Okay. Uh, and uh, if you notice right here, the answers are right here. So for the first one, it's x is equal to 2.5. Or if you write, wrote five halves, that's all right too. Uh, and remember for, so number one is basic in algebra one kind of type of question. It's so linear. We're just going to solve for x like how we would normally solve for x. For number two, please make sure you're setting both of those equal to zero. So it's going to be x plus four equal to zero and then x minus four equal to zero. Okay. And again, feel free anytime to press pause. To, um, so that you can solve it yourself, because you just look into the screen going, uh-huh, 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 is not going to help your brain. Your brain is just going to know how to go, uh-huh, 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 and not actually like how to solve the problem. Okay, and then we're going down a little bit more. Uh, three is a little bit tricky just because it looks different, but it's the same thing. It's still factors. So if you notice right here, the x is a factor as well as the uh, x plus three. So you're setting both of those factors in, uh, as equal to zero. So um, just right here, so this x right here is right here, this x, and we're setting it equal to zero. And then right here, the x plus three is this x plus three, and we're setting that equal to zero, and we're solving both of them. Well, the first one, x equals to zero, there's nothing to solve, it's already solved, yay, x equals to zero. And then this one right here, again, subtract three on both sides, and you just get x equals to negative three. That would be your answer right there. And then the last one, it's a little bit tricky, but it's the same thing. So we have three different terms. So you're like, hmm, is there then going to be three different answers? And we're like, yes, exactly. So we have x minus 5 equal to 0, x plus 1 equal to 0, and x minus 2 equal to 0. So if you're taking a look right there, so I'm just going to just color coordinate them. That guy right there, and then the x minus 2 equal to 0. Okay, so th that's where those are. And we set them equal to zero, and you should have gotten x equal to five, negative one, and two. And if you relate it back to what we've learned, think about what we've learned, um, which is, what do we just find? What are the zeros? What does that mean? On a graph, remember, it just means that this is the uh, roots, which means, i.e., the x-intercepts, right? So if you're going to take a look at here, uh, these are the roots. So at negative one, two, and five, that's where the graph is going to cross the x-axis. So what would that graph look like? We're like, well, it has to crawl. It crosses only here at negative one, two, and five. So we're like, well, it could go like this as a cross, but then we remember it has to go back down at some point. So that'll cross over the two, but then it has to turn again because it has to cross at the five. So it's gonna look something like this. Or, well, what if it goes the other way? So what if we start from up here and go down through negative one, and then we're like, well, it's gotta turn to get to two. And turn again to get to five. Oh, that was kind of weird. But yeah, so it's going to look like one of these. So these are now what we call cubics. Okay. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And that's our extension uh, from our quadratics. We're going to go right straight into cubics. So here we go. Uh, so that's learning target. Here we go. Uh, connect the characteristics and behaviors of quadratic and cubic functions to their factors, which is what we were just doing. We were connecting our quadratic knowledge our cubic knowledge. They're all connected. It's all related. And their factors, which is what we did. We set them all equal to zero since, you know, this equation is equal to zero. Uh, and then we're going to determine the zeros, i.e. roots, i.e. x-intercepts, right? Uh, and, and the multiplicity of the function zeros. Remember, multiplicity is um, some of the number, what, uh, like, think, we'll talk about it. Think of multiple, right? Multiple, multiplicity, same. And then we're going to show how linear, quadratic, and cubic functions demonstrate the fundamental theorem of algebra. What in the world is that? 
it's in the back of your book, it's in the glossary. And we'll talk about it in like one minute, two minutes, three minutes, something like that. All right, so that was uh, what we did today and we're gonna go on to the getting started, next page. All right, on the next page you see the difference in degree. And right here, if you notice in here, we did a little bit of highlighting. So uh, remember that a linear function, uh, which we know like y is equal to x or y is equal to three x plus one or whatever it is, um, uh, as long as it's not a constant function, is a polynomial degree of one because the greatest exponent in their linear function equation is a one, right? So remember we, last unit we talked about the degree, right? And so the highest degree in this one is if it's not there, is an invisible one, not imaginary, because it's not imaginary, it's invisible, the hollow one. <laughs> All right, so that's just gonna be one right there, which we call linear. Quadratic function uh, is a polynomial of degree two. So this is what we've been doing, right? Y is equal to X squared. X squared, that two right here, that means that uh, we're looking at a quadratic, right? That's, that's what we need to know. And the last one is gonna be the cubic one, which is of course the degree of three, like a cube, right? So that's why we call it a cube. So this one is a degree of three right here. And I had asked you guys um, to figure out whether it's gonna be linear, quadratic, or cubic, right? And if you wanna pause right here, you didn't do it yet, then go do it, right? And then, so uh, again, f of x, remember this is the exponent of one, because it's not there. So we call that linear. Notice this one, it doesn't matter what these constant numbers are or what these other coefficients or numbers are. Uh, we're just looking at the highest exponent. And here again, there's no exponent, which means there's an exponent of one. So that both of these are linear. And then we go to the next one, we're like, well, they're all linear. And we're like, no, we're multiplying two linear things together to get a quadratic. So if we were to multiply this out, x times x would give us that x squared, right? So that's why we call this a quadratic. Uh, same thing with d. Uh, this, the biggest exponent we would get is by multiplying this x times this x, which is an x squared. So again, quadratic. Okay, don't worry about this other work around there because we're not there yet. We will be doing that in just a brief moment. And if we look right over here, this, if we were gonna multiply all the x's together, know that, notice that we're multiplying three x's together, which would give us an x cubed, right? Because x times x, x squared, plus another times the next, another x is gonna give us x cubed. Same thing with this guy. So these both on the bottom are cubic. You notice linear, quadratic, cubic. You see the pattern? Patterns are everywhere. Okay, so then we talked about uh, multiplicity if you have your highlighter, just like this, right? Um, this is what you're gonna highlight, the multiplicity. So multiplicity is how many times a particular number is a zero for a given function, okay? So if it comes out like two times or three times or five times, that would be the, its multiplicity. What do I mean by that? Because we've already, we've already seen stuff like this. We're just giving it a name now. So remember we did this thing right here, x minus two times x minus two equal to zero. Well, okay, set both things equal to zero. Okay, so we did that, equal to zero. And then we got x equal to two and x equal to two. We got x equal to two, two times. So normally we would just write, oh, x equals to two. That's it, right? We wouldn't write it twice, we just, because why? Right, but now we're gonna actually add in a little bit more information. And instead of just saying x is equal to two, we're gonna say x equal to two multiplicity of two because it happened two times, okay? So, um, and that's, and, uh, so that's, that's how you do that. Um, and if you remember the multiplicity of two, we would call that a double root, right? Because um, it happened two times. We've seen this before and we just called it a double root. Uh, but we never had to state it. But now we're going to state it because we want to be a little bit more specific. So remember what that would mean is at x is equal to two. So here's two right here. And what we're going to do is the, the double root means that it's just going to bounce off. Do so you see how it just touches the two just once and then it just goes right back up again. Okay, it doesn't, um, it doesn't go through, right? It doesn't cross through like how we did for the do now, remember like it just crossed through, right? We're not doing that, it's just bouncing off. I call it bouncing off, I don't, it's like touch and go. That sounds like somebody's in the ICU, it was touch and go. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's, that's what that's gonna be. It's, that's what that's gonna look like. So this is gonna help us, the multiplicity is gonna help us with the graphing part, okay? So, and then for number two, it says to go back through C through F and then talk about the zeros and the multiplicities. So that's what we did. So we went to C, right? And we said, again, just like how we did for the new, do now, we said both of these equal to zero, 
right? So x equal to zero and x minus one equal to zero, and we got zero and one. If you have a multiplicity of one, you don't need to state that. You just write it one time and you're good, right? That's it. Okay, it's assumed that's a multiplicity of one. Okay, so then if you look at a D, right, we got x minus one times x minus one, uh, which is zero. So we're setting both those equal to zero. And we're like, oh, that's the exact same thing. So it's x equal to one, right? Because we're adding one to both sides. So x equal to one, and we got another x equal to one. Well, now we, we trigger the multiplicity. So we're going to say x equal to one, multiplicity of two, because it came out two times, right? And somebody in my class took a notice and said, well, isn't that like x minus one squared? I'm like, well, yeah, right? So here's my x minus one squared. So this, it would be written out as x minus one squared, like x minus one times x minus one, okay? A lot of you guys messed that up on the, on the test or the quiz, whichever one. Yeah, that's good. And so, um, yeah, the x minus one squared, this is what it means. Okay, and so whenever you see that square, you're going to have to think, oh, wait, multiplicity. We're going to have to deal with some multiplicities here. All right, and then same thing with the E and F. Again, if you have not done this, please pause. If you were just watching on at home and you're just like, on, at, during class time, you're like, I don't know, <laughs> do it now. All right, so again, we're going to set the, each of these equal to zero. So X is equal to zero, X minus one equal to zero, and this other X minus one equal to zero. Okay, so then what do you what do you get? What do you write? How do you write it? So it's going to be zero, right? And we don't put any multiplicities because it only comes out once. And then one and one come out two times. So one multiplicity of two. That's it. Um, same thing with this cubic here. So we got x, this x right here. So this x right here is from this x right here. And we got the other x. Put this guy right here. And the last guy, x minus 1, that's this x minus 1. Remember how to solve for x minus 1, right? So x minus 1, you just add 1 to both sides, right? Plus 1, plus 1, and you get x is equal to 1. If you can do that in your head, that's fine. But um, sometimes you need to see the works, you know? So again, it's going to be 1, a, a comma, and then 0 multiplicity of 2. Or you can write down 0 multiplicity of 2, comma, 1. As long as you're separating it out with a comma, you're okay. The order does not matter. You're just listing out points that uh, the roots are. Okay, that's it. That's all you're doing. All right, so let's move on. Oh, the other thing that we need to notice, right here, number three. What do you notice about the zeros of a function counted with multiplicity and the degree of, excuse me, and the degree of function? And we notice right here, remember, oh, quadratic x squared. How many roots do we have? Two. Over here, quadratic, we got the degree of two. How many, how many uh, what is it called? How many roots does it have? One multiplicity of two, which is two, right? We just called it a double root, right? But it happens two times, right? And then same thing with the cubic. This one is three degrees, right? It's a degree of three. And how many roots does this have? Three, right? And so basically, just like people have said in class, whatever your degree is, is equal to the number of roots you're going to have, okay? So I'm just going to write that right here. So the number of degree, if I can spell degree, is equal to number of roots. I'm going to say real and imaginary. Because remember, in quadratics, we had some imaginary roots. And I can imagine for cubics, probably going to have imaginary roots as well, real and imaginary. We're combining all of that together, all right? So if you remember for the imaginary roots, they still had two imaginary roots. And um, you would never have one real root and one imaginary root for quadratic, but for cubic, find out. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna do a whole bunch of skipping. We're just gonna go flip, flip, flip. Okay, this is kind of like a deconstructing the cubic function where it's like three linear equations and they're gonna graph the three linear equations and then we're going to see how is that related to the actual function. There is a relationship. If you want to find out, then graph, the, graph this equation right here on Desmos and kind of compare it to this guy right here and see what the relationship is, which is actually quite interesting. But that will be for your own learning. Okay, so we're going to go on to right here, 4.3. So we are on page 176. All right, so now, I don't know if you knew, well, many people knew, right? 
But if you're in factor form, how do we get to standard form? And you're like, well, you just multiply it out. That's what a lot of people did on the test, unnecessarily even, because you could have just found the roots with the factor form. But oh well. And so that's what we're going to do here. So you're going to take this equation right here. And this, e oh, and this equation right here. And we're going to say, are they the same, right? And how do we show that? So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the factored form and then we're going to unfactor it, right? Basically we're going to distribute everything to see uh, what we would get uh, for, uh, to see what the answer would be. And then they have to be the same as this blue one right here. That's all we're doing. Okay, so again, I just multiplied them out. I just multiplied the first two together, but honestly, it doesn't matter which order you do that in. I just like to keep it systematic. So x times 3x is 3x squared. x times negative 2, negative 2x. Now we do the second terms. So here's the 2. We're going to multiply the 2 with the 3x, which is 6x. 2 times the negative 2, which is negative 4. Okay, I'm going to combine like terms. So I have the negative 2 plus 6, which is plus 4x. And now I'm going to multiply this. Uh, let's change the color. Oh, I can just do purple. So this guy comes down here because we did, you know, it goes down there because we didn't multiply that out yet. So now we're going to just now multiply. So 3x squared times x, 3x cubed. Don't forget the cubed. Very important. Then 3x times a 4, which is 12x squared, right? And you're going to keep on doing that. So again, do this yourself. Don't like rely on me and be like, okay, I'm just going to watch Miss Lee do it because now you know that I can do it, but you need to know if you can do it, right? So don't be lazy. If you pick up your pencil, do a thing, help your brain to study. And this is how we study, all right? Not by just watching going, uh-huh, mm -hmm. If that were true, there would be a lot of, lot more professional football players, right? Because <laughs> if you just watch football, that means you're going to become a really good football player, right? No. How do you become a really good football player? Oh, you, you go out on the field and you practice, right? You do a thing, right? How do you become a really good math, math person? You go out and you do a thing. You like practice math. You don't like watch people do math. You actually have to do it. Just saying, that's just the way it works here, right? Don't complain to me. They didn't make that rule up. That's just the way our bodies work. All right, and so we're going to distribute out the 4x with the x and also the negative four with both of those guys out, okay? And so this is what I, I got. I tried to color coordinate them. So my blue ones is where I multiply the last term, the negative four with the X and the four. And then the red, the pinkish ones are the middle term right here where I multiply with the X and the four, all right? Oh, and then you should, once you get combined like terms, right? You got your three X cubed. That's the only three X cubed that I have. And then I have my X squares and I, that adds up to a 16 X squared. And then I have 16x minus 4x, which is plus 12x, and minus 16. Yay. If you notice right here, I wrote down y int. The reason why is because I was asking, oh, before that, ooh, let's go back to this color right here. So before that, this was g of x. So we found that g of x is equal to this guy, which is exactly the same as this f of x. Same thing. Yay. Okay. And I was just asking, well, what does the standard form tell us? Like, what did it tell us for the quadratic? Right? It told us the y-intercept. That was like the end of the open up, open down. Except now we're in cubic, so we don't know if that tells us open up or open down. Like, right, so we don't know about that part. But remember, the y-intercept is when the x is 0. So if you plug in 0 for x, 0, 0, 0, the only thing that's left is the negative 16. That's it. So we're going to, so that negative 16 is still representing the y-intercept even though it's, we're in a cubic now. So that, because that concept is still the same. It's when x is zero. What do you, what do you get when x is zero? It's the only number that's there that have no x in it, right? Okay, so now we're gonna move on. I might just move it a little bit to the left. Okay, so we're gonna do these in this order. Okay, we're gonna find the roots first, then we're gonna plot the roots. Oh, this is on page, the next page, 177. All right, usually we just go to the next page. Uh, find the roots, plot the roots, then we're going to determine the product algebraically. We will not, on the test, I will not tell you to do all these different steps. Okay, well, there's a, there's a better way. But for now, we're just conceptually trying to figure out how to do this stuff. Okay, so 
it's going to be kind of the long way, but it's good practice, okay? Because I'm expecting you to know how to do all these things. And a lot of you guys, when you're multiplying these long things, make mistakes along the way. So this is a good place to make sure you're like getting it and not messing up like the negatives and stuff like that. All right, so find the roots. So here we go. And notice right here, we just need to set it equal to zero. I don't know why they didn't already do that or at least put in an f of x is equal to, and they just put down an expression, which it's not graphable. I mean, it is graphable, it's just on a number line though, so it's not, it's pointless for us. So anyways, uh, we're gonna, see, notice they're all in factored form, right? So we're gonna just use a zero product property and we're gonna set them all equal to zero. Okay, so we have x plus two equals to zero, negative three x plus two equals to zero, two x plus one equal to zero, okay? So three things equal to zero, so we should, Three, three things equal to zero, so we should get three different answers. All right, so we have, um, remember we're subtracting two of both sides, so we've got x equals to negative two. This one, we're just doing some algebra stuff. Um, please note that uh, negative two divided by negative three is a positive two thirds, okay? So um, if you kept that as a negative, please change that now, check your answer. Um, and again, for this one, this is gonna be negative one half, all right? So, um, and what I did over here, I just, we just plotted it. And if you can look, if you look very closely, look, look really close at the screen, uh, we went by twos. Okay, so every two of those boxes equaled one unit. Okay, so it'd be negative one and then negative two. So skip two, just because it'll also be so close together, it's hard to see. Okay, okay, and we can do that. That's why we number them. Uh, and so we're plotting them. So the negative two goes over here on the x-axis, that negative two. Two thirds is gonna be like, it's not one, it's less than one. Because if you eat two thirds of a pizza, did you eat one pizza? No, we ate less than one pizza. We still have a third left. So you're like, see mom, I left you some. <laughs> All right, and then so two thirds, but it's more than a half. So that's why it's a little bit to the right of the half, if you can see. I don't know if you can see that, but just make sure on yours that you do a little bit to the right of the half. It's a little bit more than half, right? Because if you eat half a pizza or two thirds of a pizza, which one ate more, right? The two thirds pizza. All right, and then the right here, the negative one half, it's right here, right in the dead center between zero and negative one. There you go. So those those are those are the only three places that this graph is going to cross the x-axis. It does not cross anywhere else. Zero, none, nowhere else. Okay, those are the only three places. The other thing that you want to so we plotted the roots. Now we're going to multiply. So we got all these three guys. We're going to multiply for days. Okay, so do that. I'm not gonna explain it, you just do it. Don't copy it down, just do it. And then see if you got what I got, okay? Now, you've done it, because I'm assuming you press pause and now you're pressing play, good. And so if you notice right here, um, uh, we so I just said f of x is equal to negative six x cubed minus 11 x squared plus four x plus four. Always write it in standard form, it's the easiest way to go, okay? And it's really easy to check too. So I'm um, always the biggest exponent first, and then the next biggest exponent, and then the next biggest, and then your constant at the very end, okay? And remember what we said, that that last number right there was the y-intercept. So we're gonna plot that. So do you see how we plotted that four right there? Okay, and then now we're going to do a little bit of thinking, okay? We're gonna do some theoretical work. What if x was negative a million? What would happen? So X is all the way over here on the left, like go all the way to the left at negative a million. Like would, it, would that answer be positive or would it be negative? So we can actually find out. We don't need the actual number. We just wanna know if it's positive or negative. Like this is, think back to like interval of increase and decrease, similar kind of idea. So if you take a look at this and inside this X, we're gonna put in a big negative number. So you see how it's like this gobbledygook, it doesn't matter what this number is. We'll make it a negative million, negative billion, whatever it is. Okay, so, and we're gonna cube it. So we're gonna, so basically what that cube means is that we're going to multiply that same gobbledygook number, negative gobbledygook number, three times, okay? And then we have that negative six out here in front. All right, and then we're like, well, is it gonna be positive or negative? We're like, well, these two negatives become positive and these two negatives become positive. So therefore, our, oop, I didn't want that. Therefore, our answer is positive, okay? So that's why this answer is positive. So we know it's gonna be a big positive number. And honestly, we could do the same thing with the, with these other one, but if you're dealing with like a billion, right? It's a positive billion, and I subtract out a million, is that gonna make it negative? No, it has no effect on it, whether it's gonna be positive or negative. 
right? That's why we don't like the plus four. Is that going to make it a negative? No, we're like already at a real, or really, well, plus we're adding. <laughs> it's already a huge positive number. The little bits is not going to make a difference. It's not going to make it positive or negative. It's not going to switch those signs. Okay, so that's what we just look at this first term. And I don't think I said that in the class, so that's why. That's what we just looked at the first term. And nobody has asked that, so, but that's the explanation for that. Okay, so now we know that if it's a very big negative number, we know that it's going to be positive, so that's where we're going up here. It's not going to be negative because we found that it was going to be positive. So here we go. It goes up here, and we know that it's going to cross. The first time it crossed the x-intercept, x-axis, is going to be at negative 2. So it's going to cross negative 2. Then we're like, well, it needs to also cross negative 1. So then we're like, oh, we better turn. Okay, we don't know when it turns. We just know that it does turn. It could, it, could, it could have gone like from here down lower. Like, we don't know. Like, there, there's no, we don't know. Okay, but that's not what we're concerned about right now. We wanted the rough estimate, the sketch. We're just sketching, right? So, and about. So, we're going around, like, so we're just going to dip up, dip, go down, and then go up. And then we're going to cross at four. Okay, my four doesn't look, it's supposed to cross only at four. And then make sure yours does. And then we're going to go, we got to turn again because we have to cross here at two thirds, right? So then we have to turn. I don't know when it turns, but I'm just know it's going to have to go through four and then turn at some point, right? And then it's going to go down. And then it, does it ever go back up again? No, because it never crosses this x axis again. So it just goes down forever and ever. And if we were to check that, right? What if x was a really big positive number, right? And then we're like, so this was positive instead of negative. So that means this is positive, that is positive, and that is positive, right? Because it's the same number. So positive a billion, right? Times a positive a billion times a positive a billion. But then we have this one negative right out here, the negative six. That makes the whole thing negative. And if you notice right here, negative. So we know we did a good job, okay? That, um, that what we just did there with the positive billion and negative a billion, that is, um, that's called end behavior. And we're gonna talk about that. That goes kind of into like, Calculus ideas, okay? A little bit, just a brief taste, <laughs> okay? But if you ever get the chance to take calculus, please take it. It's, it's, this is, calculus is where everything comes together, where your algebra, your geometry, all of that gets combined into, into calculus. And all those concepts that you learned, it's, it goes in there. It's very interesting. I was like, oh, okay, honestly, in high school, though, I was like, what? <laughs> but it was, it was, it's very interesting. I, I loved it. And you could finally understand why the circumference of a circle and the area of a circle and this, the volume of a sphere, how they're all related. Those formulas are all related. And once you get into uh, calculus, you can see why. But I can't tell you. You'll have to wait until you take that class. And then and some of you are like, <laughs> I can hardly do this class. <laughs> you just try it anyways. All right, so we're going to do the same thing for number letter B. Okay, so we're going to take a look at uh, x plus 2 cubed, right? Remember, the cubed means we're doing that three times, the x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2, right? So, um, and we're going to set those all equal to 0. And then basically, you're, again, subtract 2 on both sides. So what do you get? x equal to negative 2. How many x equal to negative 2 are we going to get? We're going to get 1 here, 1 here, and 1 here. So that's why it's multiplicity of 3. So it's negative two, molt three, okay? And if you notice, let's see if I have my Desmos available. Not yet. Ooh, look, the review sheet. We'll go to Desmos right here. Oh, I already have it. So do you see this x plus two to the third power? Do you see how it looks like this? That's what a multiplicity of two looks like. So if we have a multiplicity of two and i told you it, it's a double root and it like would bounce off that's what i mean do you see how it just touches the x-axis right right at negative two and then it just goes right back up that's what i'm talking about okay so that's what that is and so what a cube looked like i kind of think of it like it's kind of like a parabola it's not exactly since it's cubed but it's kind of like a parabola but you broke its arm and now it's up here okay so they were down like this, and now it's like, boop. Okay, that's what the multiplicity of three does. So anything with a multiplicity of three is going to look like this. Okay, so if I were to even put in, let's say instead of that, I put in a five. Look, same thing. What if I just put in an x, 
x to the third power, right? If you notice the red, it is that that's what it is. Okay. So um, yeah, so any cubes are gonna look like that. And if I put a negative in front, guess what will happen? Boom. It's like dancing. <laughs> I wonder if I could keep on doing that. No, I can't do that. <laughs> so we'd be like, oh, I can't do it. I'm like, oh, we can make it flip, <laughs> but we can't do that. All right. So, but anyways, that's what cubes look like. I need to stop doing that. And the only other thing, so I plotted in a negative two. And how did I get this eight? Right. And if you remember, remember the last digit the last digit, the plus whatever, or minus whatever, this plus four right here for the first one. Um, how do we get that four? Well, you basically just multiplied all these, all these constant numbers together, right? Two times two times one, that's how we got four. And so that's how we're gonna get this number right here. This eight is just gonna be this two times this two times this two. So two times two times two, which is eight, all right? And that's how we know it's gonna cross right there. My graph is not great but it's gonna like come, oh. And how do we know that it comes down and up? Well, we saw it on Desmos. But if you were gonna take a look at, another way to take a look at this is x plus two, remember this is x plus two cubed, right? This was like our f of x. So what, remember, what if x is a really, really big negative number, right? A negative, big negative number plus two is not gonna make it positive, right? It's just gonna still be a big negative number, right? So whatever this big negative number is, and we're gonna cube it, right? So then how many negatives do we actually have? We have one, we have two, we have three, right? So that's negative times negative, that's gonna be positive. And then this positive times this negative, that's gonna be negative, right? So we have an odd number of negatives, which means that only two of them are gonna cancel out, that third one is gonna take make it negative. So that's why we're, the arm is down here. So it's gonna go from down here, then go up through eight, and then go keep on going up that way. Okay, okay. Now, oh, just a note, Max did not do a good job. He's got a thumb down. This is what a lot of people have done. So if you look at this right here, this is x plus two to the third power, right? And he says that that's the same as x cubed plus eight. And you're like, hmm, he must have just gone, oh, x cubed plus, Two to the third power, which is eight. No, you can't, because remember what this means. This is x plus two. How many times? Three times, right? Which means that you actually have to like multiply it all out in order to get the standard form. Okay, so you get something like x to the third power, x cubed plus something, 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 something. Do you really want me to do that? This, these two terms right here is going to be x squared plus x times 2, which is 2x, and this x times 2, which is 2x, which is 4x. And this is going to be plus 4. And then we're going to multiply with x plus 2, this x plus 2 right here. And this is going to be x to the third power times uh, 2x squared. And we're going to take that middle term. That's going to be 4x times x, which is 4x squared times plus 8x. Again, I would practice, don't just look at me doing going, huh? Try it yourself, <laughs> okay? And these last two guys is gonna be plus four X plus eight. I don't do this for me, I do this for you. I already know how to do all this stuff, right? And uh, so here go, X cubed, and this is gonna be plus six X squared. Uh, these two guys is plus 12 X plus eight, right? And the higher you go into math, I will tell you, it just gets more and more interesting. And you're just like, Wow, it's all they're like this. Like, I will tell you, it's very beautiful. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. <laughs> I did not think I was gonna think that way, but when I went to college and I took geometry in college, I was like, oh. okay. So um, there we go. And we're gonna talk about. Oh yeah, that's what you should have gotten instead of what Max. Do you see how Max like forgot the whole middle stuff? Like he didn't even address that, right? So this guy in the six x squared and plus twelve x. That's not the same as this x to the third plus 8x. He just got the first term and the last term. That's all he did. Okay, that's why it's wrong. It's completely different. All right, so now, talk to talk. I hope you did this. If you did not do this, stop right now and go try it. Okay, see if you get it better now.
All right, that's how you can check. All right, let's take a look here. So we have this, it says use the factors to sketch each cubic function and label the zeros. Then we write the function in general form. Okay, we can do that. So we're like, okay, x plus three, we're finding the zeros right now. So x plus three is equal to zero. Uh, negative x plus five is equal to zero. And two minus two x is equal to zero. All right, well, how do I do this? Subtract three on both sides and I get x is equal to negative three. Perfect, all right. Over here, what I notice is that my neg x is negative, right? So what I like to do to save some time is just to add x on both sides. And some of you guys may, might have been like, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, you could totally say, add the same thing on the, both sides. You did not break the rules, right? So this is five is equal to x or x equal to five. Do you see how much, so what some people like to do is, let me just show you negative x plus five is equal to zero. They're like, no, no, the x must stay on the left, right? Then you're, they're like, okay, we're gonna subtract five on both sides. Then you're like, well, we got negative x is equal to negative five. Well, how do we get rid of that negative? There's two ways to do it. You could either divide by negative one or you could multiply by negative one. It doesn't matter which one because when you multiply or divide by negative one, you're not changing the value. We're just changing the sign. Okay, so uh, I'm going to just multiply by negative one. And you're like, well, can I do that? But I'm already multiplying. What's the point? The goal of it is to get rid of the negative. Am I getting rid of the negative if I multiply by negative one? Yeah, there we go. And I'm doing it to both sides. So I'm keeping it even. So the properties of equality have not been broken. Okay? No X's have been broken in the making of this, this equation. <laughs> All right, so then negative one times negative X is X. Negative five times negative one is five. And notice, same thing. Here, two steps. Here, one step. That's why I like this way better, okay? Um, will you be wrong doing it the other way? Will I look at you differently? No, that's perfectly fine. As long as you're doing the right steps, that's okay, all right? And then again here, I notice that my x is negative as well. So I'm gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna just add the two x instead, right? And I'm gonna, two is equal to two x. And then I'm gonna just divide out the two the one on the right, right, because of the x right here, and we get x is equal to one, all right? So we have, we're gonna, I'm just gonna sum it up here. So x is equal to negative three, five, and one. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. There's my negative three. And make sure that the spacing is about equal, and here's gonna be one. Like even between this y-axis and this, how see how mine's a little bit bigger? It's not good, but about the same. So this can be one, Oh, I need one at one. And then two, three, four, five. Right there. Okay, so those are my three roots. Okay, now we've done that. Now it says then we write the, the uh, <laughs> write in general form. We're just going to figure out what our, uh, what is it called? Our x's are, are, are uh, the, we're gonna multiply it all out. I can't talk to you apparently. That's okay. So, again, don't just watch me do it, unless you're confused, and then watch it, and then you do it yourself. You try it yourself. That's the best way to study, okay? Not just watch. You can learn from watching, but you learn more from doing it yourself, okay? But we always have to start with watching, and then we do it ourselves, okay? So x times negative x, this is negative x squared. Ooh, we have a negative x squared. We've not seen that before. And then here, x times five is gonna be plus five x. Let's try a different color. And then we're gonna go three times negative x, it's negative three x. And three times five is gonna be plus 15. I'm gonna combine like terms. And I'm gonna be like negative x squared. This is gonna be plus two x. So we've got five x minus three x. That's gonna be plus 15. Why am I writing crooked? That is odd. And then don't forget, I gotta multiply this second one, or the third one, I should say. And then what do I get? So negative x squared times two is gonna be, I'll try to write straight, negative two x squared. Negative two times negative two x is gonna be positive four 
<laughs> not four. Positive two x to the third power, right? X to the third power. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the second term right here. So two x times two is plus four x, and two x times negative two x is negative four x squared. And then we have our last guy, so the plus 15. It's gonna be 15 times two is 30. 15 times negative two x is gonna be negative 30 x. All right, so we're gonna combine some like terms here. So what do we have? Uh, my biggest one is this x to the two x to the third power. And then I have my x squared, so this is my x squared. I have another x squared here. So negative two, negative four is negative six x squared. Then I just have my x's, one, two, three, four x minus 30 x, which is gonna be minus 26 x. Then I have my last one right here, which is plus 30. Ooh, that means my y-intercept. Oh, was this f of x? Yep, f of x. We're still using that same f of x because it is the same equation, or the same function, all right? So that's gonna be plus 30, so. We're just gonna be like way the heck up here. Okay, so that's 30. So we're just gonna go boom. We're just gonna. All right, now remember what we talked about is the arm is gonna go from down to up or up to down, right? Like which way are we coming in from the positive side or the negative side, right? So remember if x was a very big negative number, so like negative whatever, it doesn't matter. So it's gonna be like uh, two times. I'm just going to say negative and then cube it. <laughs> just negative some number. It doesn't even matter. Some big, big number, right? So that means that there are three negatives in there and then we have a positive two. So it's a negative times negative, positive. And then I have one negative left, which means the whole thing is negative. So this is going to be negative. So we're coming from down here, which kind of makes sense because my y-intercept is right there. Like how else would I get there? If it was up here, I guess until less, negative three was a double root but it's not. So it's going to go here. And it's going to go through one. It's got to turn and go to five. Oh, that's terrible. Let's try that one more time. So here, probably something like this. Oh, it's supposed to go. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> Happy days. All right. So if we take a look at that, we're going to try this on Desmos really quick. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. And we're going to put in our x all this up. So we're going to say x plus, oh, plus 3. See linear? And then we're going to times it by another linear. Negative x plus 5. Now we get a cubic. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, see? And then we're gonna go, do I just make the whole thing? There we go. And then we're gonna multiply by another linear, which is two minus two, haha, <laughs> two minus two x. And what do you get? Now we got a cubic. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And so notice right here, we have negative three, a one, and a five, yes. And look, our arm is on the left, which is what we said it was gonna be. And our y-intercept right here at 30, yeah? Oh, look, see the point is like way the heck up here, right? Our, my point's not like that, but that's okay. I got the general idea, right? And let's see my minimum right here. My minimum is over here at like negative 49, so it should have been a lot lower, but that's fine. Okay, but we got the general idea. We did, we did a good job, okay? Um, so good, that's how that goes. All right, we're going to do B. So if you have not done B yet, do B right now. Do be, do be. <laughs> All right. So if we got this one right here, remember we're looking for x's for the zeros, I should say. So if you, well, if you want to solve this, right? Remember how we, if it was a square, we just square rooted it. We can technically cube root that, but we won't go there. <laughs> Not right now. We're just going to go with what we know so far. So x minus two, like this, is equal to zero. And so x is equal to, so x minus two, we literally do this like 
three times. Do you need to always write it three times? No, but it's a good reminder, right? Since we just started doing this, right? So this is our answer is gonna be x is equal to two, right? Add two to both sides. And then multiplicity of three, this many. So we're gonna go x is equal to two. So one, two, there's two. Table it just like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to remember, oh, what was the y-intercept, right? The y-intercept was the two times the two times the two. But remember, this is negative two. So it's negative two times negative two times negative two, which is gonna be negative eight. Okay, so that's going to be our y-intercept. So it's gonna be right here, negative eight. So how's that gonna look like? So remember what it's gonna be. So if x is a very big negative number, that means it's negative to the third power, which means that it's gonna just be negative. So it's gonna come down from here, probably like cross the eight right there. And then we're gonna be like, Shh, oh, that's terrible. Let's try that one more time. Oh my dear. Oh, no, it still doesn't cross eight. So remember, oh, there, that's probably a little bit better. It looks something like, so it look, there's like this, in, what we call an inflection point. Yeah, so inflection, that's what it's going to look like, if a multiplicity of three. Now, uh, how are cubic functions similar to linear functions? How are they different? Well, how are they the same? They still have one y-intercept, right? How are they different? They have a lot more roots. Um, and this one's curvy. And linears are just, well, a line, right? And these are curvy. OK, it's like a snake, like somebody said in my class, right? And um, how are they similar and different to quadratic functions? Well, think about it. Well, again, they still have y, a y and only one y-intercept. We don't have two. If it was two, it's not a function. And, uh, and we have multiple roots, right? We have more than one root, just like a quadratic function. Except for cubics, we have three roots. They might not all be real, right? Or they, but so far we've only dealt with real roots. If it's factorable, they have real roots. Okay, um, yeah, so those are the similar, similarities and differences. Um, so we're gonna go more into stuff like this. If you didn't understand it fully this time, don't worry, we're gonna come back to where we're gonna keep on like developing our ideas on that, all right? So homework is page 181. Uh, practice one. So it's this guy right here. Um, just note right here, they give you three linear functions. K of x is equal to x minus one, m of x equal to, uh, is equal to x plus two, and n of x is equal to x minus three. And if you haven't figured this out, you're like, what? Just remember, we're just plugging them in. So f of x is equal to, what is k of x? x minus one. So we're going to go x minus one. And m times m of x. So what's m of x? Oh, x plus two. And what's n of x? Oh, x minus three. That's literally your function. And this is what we've been doing this whole time, right? So we're, uh, I should have said, not don't, well, you can graph a. Yeah, this just, it's okay. You can still do it, you can still graph. I would just graph with different colors. Okie dokies. I will talk to you later. Have fun, bye.